Zodiac, a former tier 0 archetype IRL, just got two of its most important cards unleashed from the ban list. Now obviously it's been a good while since Zodiac's reign of terror on the TCG, so surely this archetype can't be that strong anymore. R right? R r right guys? So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you are watching this or even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even subscribed yet. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of content or see more deck lists from me in the future or more videos from me in the future, then have to do a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's jump into this deck list. So today's decklist is obviously going to be your Zodiacs combined with your Cash Tira, which is an archetype that has a surprising amount of synergy with Zodiac, considering the Cash Tiras don't really need their normal summon, and Zodiac is just a normal summon one time full combo sort of a decklist. So combining them together works extremely well, especially considering the Zodiacs, whilst they have a fairly solid going second sort of play of just summon out a six material Zeus, going first, they often can't set up enough disruption by themselves to be able to safely defend against your opponent's stuff. So playing the Cash Tiras with it, means you're of course going to summon out things like a, you know, a Cash Tira Rise Heart, which is a macro cosmos on, le on legs, in combination with things like your Dryden's, or summoning out things like a Draco Future, or sometimes both of them together in combination with the Arise Heart. So it makes your turn one a hell of a lot stronger and a hell of a lot safer, just playing the two art types together. And going second, you still have plenty of room for a shit ton of hand traps, and of course, a plenty of a plenty of Zodiac cards to go into your standard Borbo, summon out a billion Zodiacs, hit your opponent in the face, and make a Zeus which has like a billion different materials. So, solid going second plan, and thanks to the Cash Tiras, we have a very solid going first plan as well. So I'm not going to spend too much more time talking about this deck list, as obviously most of the cards in here are cards you've probably all seen before, but the cards I will briefly mention is of course the two new cards that were recently unbanned. Starting off with your rat. Alright, this card, if this card is normal summoned, you can send one Zodiac card from your deck to the graveyard, and the rest of its effect you can completely ignore, as it requires this thing to have had more than just one limit to it, which it doesn't, so ignore the rest of the effect, all this thing is used for is a normal summon, send a Zodiac card from your deck to the graveyard, which is a lot more important than it sounds, as it turns this deck list into an actual one card combo, to summon out Dryden alongside a bunch of other things, or potentially just recycling value as you'll see during the combo portion, or just summoning out a flat out just a utopic Draco future, which is pretty goddamn insane. Alright, then we have your Zodiac Barrage. This card can target one face-up card you control and destroy it. And if you do, special summon one Zodiac monster from your deck. You can only use this effect once per turn. If this card destroyed by a card effect that's sent to the graveyard, you can target one Zodiac Exceeds monster you control, attach this card from your graveyard to that Exceeds monster as material. So obviously this, this, this just adds a whole lot more consistency to the deck list, because if your opponent disrupts whatever normal summon you do via whatever means, you can just activate this card, destroy itself, and summon out a Zodiac straight from the deck list to continue on with your standard one card combo lines into a 600 material Zeus. So this just adds a lot more consistency and a lot more safety to the deck list in case your opponent has disruption for it. And that's basically it for the deck list. The rest of the, rest of the cards in here you've probably all read before, they're all just old cards you've all seen, so without further ado, let's jump into the combos and then the replays showcasing me just shitting on some kids with this deck list. Alright, so before we jump into the actual replays showcasing me shitting on some kids on the ladder with this deck list, I thought I'd quickly showcase a few of the main combos you can do with this deck list using the brand new cards, since most of you guys probably haven't seen what these recently unbanned cards actually do or seen them before in general, so I thought I'd briefly showcase just what these cards can do so you don't get completely confused when watching the gameplay. Alright, so starting off we're going to do a one card combo using your rat. Alright, so normal summon the rat. Rat's effect allows you to send one of your zodiacs to the graveyard, which in this case is going to be a copy of your bunny blast. Alright, now we can simply summon out a copy of your shakanine, or chakanine, or have you pronounce this card, to then revive that card you just put in the graveyard by detaching the rat. Alright. 
Now from here, we're going to put a few more resources on top of this card. So we have a few more resources for our Dryden. So we're going to chuck a Borbo on here. And chuck a copy of our, our Tiger on here. Before going into our Dryden. Alright. From here, we're going to activate the Dryden's effect to pop the bunny on the field. So pop our own card. And this will trigger the bunny in the graveyard, which will add back the card you started with, putting that back in your hand. And from this one card combo, you'll notice I've now used no resources and I've ended on a Dryden. So I've got a Dryden for guaranteed popping one of, your, popping one of my opponent's cards, and I have a Rap here in my hand, ready for the following turn, to then obviously be able to go into a Zeus play or whatever sort of Zodiac play you want to on the following turn. Now there is one major downside to this one combo, which is why you don't go into it that often, and that is of course, your Dryden is on zero defense. So obviously if my opponent just normal summons a card and tries to swing into it, it will force me to use my Dryden's effects. But to be fair, if their opponent is going to do that, it means they've used their battle phase, which means just because you got a bunch of hand traps in your hand or whatever else you got in your hand, if you manage to drop to your opponent enough and they can't kill you because they just wasted their battle phase, you can now summon out your rap here on the following turn, go into your Zeus plays or whatever other Zodiac plays and probably win the game anyway. So it's just a nice way to guarantee you have some follow-up and have some disruption during your opponent's turn. But if you have no way to defend the Dryden or you don't have any extra hand traps in your hand that just guarantee you're going to be able to pass the turn, you might want to go for one of the other combos I'm about to show you. Alright, onto our second combo. This one's going to be once again a one card combo, but it has the opportunity to extend as well, and I'll explain when I get to that point. Alright, so again, starting off with your rat. So normal summon your rat. Activating the rat's effect. This time, we're going to send a copy of your Ram Ram to the graveyard. This is a combo I use way more often, as you'll see during the replays. Alright, now we can go into a copy of, once again, our Shaka Nine. Alright. Activating our Chaka Nine's effect. Attaching the rat. Summoning the Ram Ram to the field. Now the whole goal of this replay is I want to try to go into a copy of my um Utopic, whatever the hell this card's for this card's called. Your number FO, Utopic Draco Future. And to do so, I'm gonna need some extra Xyz monsters on the field to go into your number F0. But you can't use this card as Xyz material. So, an easy way to get around that is we just summon out a Dryden on top of our Shaka Nine. And then pop our own Ram. This will then trigger the Ram's effect to revive back the Shaka Nine from earlier. Which now gives me two Xyz monsters. So, with just these two cards alone, I could go into a copy of my. My uh, Utopic, Utopic Future, and then ending on the Draco. But if we have an extra card in our hand, for example, if we have a Whip Tail in our hand, or we have our Barrage to get a hold of our Whip Tail, we can actually extend this a little bit further. So to do so, we're actually going to go into a copy of your Tiger using the Dryden on the field. All right, then we activate the Tiger's effect, detaching the Dryden. Then equip a material to your Shaka Nine. Doesn't matter what you equip, because you're going to attach it in a second anyway. Now we can activate this card's effect. Detaching. Then summon that Dryden back to the field. Alright, so now we have a Dryden on the field, and we can go into our... the topic play. So summoning our Utopic, and of course summoning our Draco on top of it. And because, like I said, we had a Whip Tail in hand, or we had somehow had access to a Whip Tail via Barrage, or a Tenki or something, we can now activate this card's effect, targeting our Dryden, which means on the following turn, when this thing is no longer negated, it will gain its attack boost, so it'll be 1600 or 1200 attack, and it'll have a quick effect to pop one of your opponent's cards, on top of, of course, having the Utopic Draco Future on the field as well. And this combo you'll see a lot more often, as despite what it may look like, being like a pseudo two-card combo, it comes up a lot more frequently than you might think. 
Alright, on to our third and final combo before we jump into the replays. Alright, so for this combo you just need any Zodiac, doesn't matter which one, and a copy of Barrage. Alright, so we're going to summon out our Zodiac, and the goal of this replay, or this combo, is to set up the exact same end field you just saw. Alright, so activating Barrage, using Barrage's effect to grab our Ram, by popping itself. Alright, grabbing our Ram. Alright, now from here, obviously these two cards, you can just summon out two Xyz monsters and go straight for Utopic, but we want to actually get out a copy of Dryden as well, and to do so, we're going to need to put some resources in the graveyard. And to do so, obviously, same as before, we're going to be popping our own cards. So activating the Dryden. So Dryden's going to be detaching. Then target our own Ram Ram, popping it. We shall then activate the Ram's effect to revive the card you just attached, placing that on the field. Alright, then from here we're going to go into a copy of our Shark and Iron. And this is going to look very similar to what you just saw from before. So Shark and Iron's effect, detaching, bringing back the Dryden's. Alright, now for these cards on field we can now go into a copy of our Tiger using this monster over here. which can now detach, and then equip to our Dryden's one of your cards from the graveyard. So I could have given up, I could have given it the Ram Ram so it has 2000 defense and summoners in defense, but in this case I'm actually going to give it the 1600 attack because I put an attack position. So keep note of which ones you put in the graveyard, So because this one will get, it to, will get its stat boost. Currently it's negated, but during the opponent's turn it'll be unnegated and it'll get its stat boost. So depending on which ones you put in the graveyard, you can stat boost it however you like. Alright, I think generally it's probably better to have put this thing in defense and given it the 2000 defense, if I'm going to be honest. But anyway. Alright, summing this thing out. And of course, ending on the Draco Future. So I've ended on the exact same end board as before. We dried it with one material underneath it, and I'll just show that it gets its stat boost during, stat boost during the opponent's turn. Yeah, there's the stat boost. So your 1600 attack Dryden, which has a quick effect pop, and of course your Utopic Draco Future to negate a card, and whatever other hand traps you have. Alright, without further ado, let's jump into some replays, shitting on some kids on the ladder. Alright, let's jump into these gameplays. So I've tried to get a good variety showcasing just a bunch of stuff this deckless can do, starting off with a replay where we're actually not going to use a single one of the unbanned cards, just playing standard Zodiac from what you would have seen before, and of course the Cash Tira stuff mixed in with it. Alright. So starting off we're going to use our Unicorn for a search. Grabbing our Theosis. Theosis is summoning to the field. I probably could have used Pot of Desires here to try to bait out Nash Blossom, but the downside of potentially using Desires is we banish that one Cash Tira card that you want to search off your Fenrir. So I decided I'm just going to wait in case I uh, accidentally banish the Rise Heart. It's not exactly bad if my opponent Ashmi here anyway, I just go for Zodiac plays anyway, and just draw some hand traps or something with this anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. But once we did have the Rise Heart, and I was now safe to activate the uh, draw effect. Alright, these two monsters go into your Shangri-La. Summoning my Thoroughblade, discarding a card to draw a card. And you'll notice I actually had already had the Ram Ram in hand, which is why I used my Tenki to actually search for a copy of the... Yeah, I used my Tenki to search for my Ram Ram, because I already had a way to put the Ram Ram in the graveyard without using the recently unbanned card, which is of course the... wherever it is... the Thorough Blade, which can discard a card from your hand. Alright, detaching, gonna be signing back the Ram, and you would have seen this in the previous combos. So I can now summon my Dryden, popping my own Ram. 54% win rate on Dryden, by the way. Alright, Ram's effect, reviving the Shackanine. Going for your Tiger. So you notice I have my Whip Tail in hand, so I actually have follow up to attach to my Dryden afterwards. So I can now detach, revive back the Dryden, ready to equip the Whip Tail to it. These two monsters, you know where they're going to go. Alright, Utopic Future, and finally, Utopic Draco Future. Got so many animations in this decklist, actually. 
Alright. Of course, summoning the dude, you've seen this all before. Of course, we use the Shangri La's effect, we can now summon the Arise Heart. For setting our cards and passing the turn. So we've got the Rise Heart, which is obviously a uh, whatever it is on legs, Dimension Shifter on legs, which is banishing anything my opponent tries to put in the graveyard. We have my Dryden to pop some cards. We have my Utopic Draco Future, which is going to negate some cards. And normally, this thing would summon out a Cash Tira from the deck, but I accidentally banished all the other remaining Cash Tiras, so. <laughs> but normally, it'd summon another Cash Tira during the standby. Alright, opponent's going to draw some cards. If you're wondering why I didn't activate Draw and Lockbird here, it's because you can't use Draw and Lockbird under the uh, Arise Hearts effect. Just like I can't use the Max E yet. But if my opponent removes this, which my opponent did, spoiler alert, I don't know why he re removed the one the extra monster zone rather than removing one of these as well, but each their own, I guess. Now we can use our Draw and Lockbird, which is devastating versus Makanko, I wouldn't know. I play this deck list a lot. Gonna pop this card. It may feel, it feels kind of bad popping this card, but it's sort of a 50-50 my opponent summons a card that will make all this stuff untargetable, which will make Dryden useless. So I might as well pop this now, just in case he is going to summon that card that will make everything untargetable. Since Dryden is a target effect. Alright, and from there he's gonna try to use the sword. Doesn't matter, he's under draw and Lockbird's effect, so he can only add back from the graveyard, which isn't gonna do absolutely anything. And he just concedes. Yeah, maybe you should have Lava Golem the Dryden. I don't know about that one. <laughs> anyway. Alright, moving on to our second replay now. Alright. So I think this one is a Zeus replay, I think. Because that is generally your play going second. If you're forced to go second, you're going to try to make a really fat Zeus. Alright, start of his draw phase, of course. Shifter. This deck has a lot of devastating hand traps. We're playing 3 Droll, Double Shifter, and of course the Jewel Max E, so... Is my alerts on? Yes, they are. Let me just quickly turn that off. My bad. Alright. So my opponent can't really do much under it. Of course, he's trying to play uh, Orcus, which needs its graveyard, so... He set up a decentish end field for what he could do, but the Shifter was pretty devastating. Alright, he's so going to summon out Fenrir. First, going to use my Desires to check for Ash Blossoms. Summon out my Fenrir, go straight to the battle phase. So we're actually not going to go for a Zeus here, because I just want to clear out this field. Because obviously if I try to go for a bunch of summons and stuff, this thing's going to remove my field, and that's rather annoying. In any effect, this Fenrir is going to banish my stuff. So I'm just going to clear it all out right away. And decide to banish this card instead, since we're still under Shifter. Alright, now our opponent has no disruption, except for potentially whatever this back row is. So we're going to summon out, just go for a straight up. Uh, Shangri-La. Tanky gonna be searching for our ram. Summoning the ram, popping our barrage. Or oh, popping our, sorry, Tanky. So we can save this for later. Putting two Xyz monsters on the field, one gonna be a Dryden, which can now pop this card on the field. And because we have two Xyz monsters on the field after we summon out the one on top of ram, we can of course go for our Utopic. Can't do any reviving stuff because obviously we're still under shifter, so we have nothing in our graveyard. But we can still summon out our Draco Future. Set and pass. Yeah, this card also makes it so that um under shifter you have a lot more options. And shifter does actually ruin your own plays a little bit. Tries to sum tries to use this thing's effect, of course, we're just gonna negate that and take it for ourselves. And yeah, this jewel is hell over. Gonna Ash Blossom that. I probably could have saved these Ash Blossoms or these other effects. I think I was a little bit overkill here, but I still have an Imperm, so I wasn't scared at all. No Link Monsters, no nothing. Can't, can't search anything he's done, so. Alright, on to our third replay. <laughs> is that guy's name just all oh, ah. Anyway. A A A A A A A A <laughs> Interesting name. Alright, All right, starting off with a Max C. And that means we're not going to use our Draw and Lockbird this turn, because that is some mega anti-synergy using those two cards together. So we're just going to sit on our Max C and try to draw some cards. And hopefully stop our opponent, or deter our opponent from doing too much. 
and he's playing Vanquish Soul, which is actually a very strong deck at the moment. I'm not sure if it's competing for Tier 1 or not, it might be. It's like Tier 2 or Tier 1, I can't, I can't remember what, uh, where it's standing's at. Alright, he's gonna burn me for a little bit, a little bit rude. Thankfully he's under Prosperity, so not too much burn. And one lot of Batcry. Alright. Burns me for another 1500. Alright, summoning our rat. He's going to imperm our rat, which is a little bit annoying, but it's still fine. We have plenty of things we can do, and it also means he can't imperm the Zeus if you want to use it this turn. Well, you can just chain Zeus to imperm anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. So we're just going to go straight for a Zeus here. And in fact, not only are we going to go for a Zeus, we're going to equip one card to this thing. I should have actually used the Tanky earlier. I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to do it or not. But I could have used Tenki to search for the card, which I'm going to do in a second anyway, and done a little bit of extra damage to his face there. So, slight misplay. I also could have potentially beaten over this thing with Tenki on the field. I just think it was exactly the equal amount, so I couldn't have. Trident. I think it was 2500 attack, so I couldn't actually beat over this thing. But it doesn't matter, we're going for a Zeus, and we're just going to waste two of our resources to clear the field. I'm not exactly sure where the correct choke point is versus Vanquish, so I haven't played against it enough, so I'm just not letting him go into the Link 1. I don't know if that's good or bad, I'm just going to keep keep stopping every single monster he places on the field. And because Zeus isn't a targeting effect, he can't like swap them over easy, because if he tries to swap one over, he just loses the monster he swaps it with. So I'm just going to make sure he can't go into the Link 1, and hopefully that means he can't play the game. That is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Okay, he's going to attempt to swap over here, but he just loses the monster he summons, so it's not too bad. I think they only have one special summon card, which is this thing. I'm going to draw on Lockbird here. Don't even know if I need to use that, really. So I was going to remove this thing anyway. Probably could have saved the draw. So yeah, I don't think he was really going to do anything else from here. Alright, now I'm going to summon out our Ram. Go into a Shekinine. Detaching, reviving. Summoning out a copy of our Dryden to now pop our Ram. Alright, so once again, sum back that card to the field. Go into copy of our Tiger to give our Ram an extra material. And this time, we're not going to revive the Dryden because we want to go for lethal here. So we're just going to summon out a monster on the field that has enough attack to hit him in the face. Draco Future, and yeah, 3k, 3k, 1200, 6000, he's dead. Alright, on to our final replay. This one's using all new cards, I think I didn't, de I think I didn't even use many Cash Tira cards, if any, in these replays, I think, in this last replay. Alright. So going first, and we've just got Zodiac stuff. So we're just going to go for one of those standard Zodiac combos you saw from my previous... Um... Yeah, from my combos. Alright, so Rat, going to be sending a card to the graveyard to go into your Shaka 9. He max Caesars, don't care, we've got Ash Blossom. 88% usage rate. Yeah, one day Maxi will be nerfed, so we don't have to guarantee use Triple Ash Blossom in every single deck list. Although we're probably still going to play it in most anyway. Alright, summoning this card to the field. Now, here I should have popped the ram. I shouldn't have popped this card here, because I was going to pop the ram anyway, using a Dryden in a second. I could have just popped it with the barrage here and had the same effect, so... Yeah, a bit of a slight misplay here, but it's fine. Alright, going to be discarding to draw a card. Our opponent's now going to draw a loss, which we don't really care about. We've already drawn an extra card. Summoning our boar. We're going to go into a Dryden. Dryden now going to be popping the card on the field. Reviving and Exceed. Going into the Tiger. Tiger's actually going to, because we had that extra resource, we can actually just equip Slink to our Dryden now, which we're going to equip a copy of our Ram, which now makes it safe to being targeted by your opponent's trap card effects, so safe from Imperm, which is pretty nice. And the final two cards, of course, Future. And Draco. Uh, 
Alright. And our opponent just concedes. Alright, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you did, remember to give a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch SpongeBob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.